So don't listen to these words as if it's actually based in time. Because really, I still don't know what's happening. And that is the real freedom. And when I speak, it's not that I know exactly what this is, but just in memory, it seems like there are certain things that I can recall and I know it's going to be different for everyone. But there's just um, a speaking about it. You know, it's kind of amazing that this can happen. It's kind of weird that the human body can go through this. It's kind of sad because you see how much we've accumulated, how much we've tried to hold on to and keep for ourselves. And it's all very innocent. It's all to have some safety in this crazy world. Um, and then when you go through this, there's a grieving of all of that stuff. There's a losing of it, a seeing that holding on to it or keeping it as mine actually is the suffering, creates the confusion, creates the Yeah, never feeling settled, never feeling enough, never feeling like this is enough. And yeah, there is this energetic movement to the next. So then when you settle into this, that movement is still here. That movement is quite uncomfortable and then part of the challenge is that not many people will understand why you're not trying to achieve or get or become something Because in their worldview, that is healthy. That is a, a healthy way of being. And it's true in time, as a person, all of these things seem true, you know, self-development, spiritual perfectionism. Um, you're constantly getting somewhere. You have a reason for doing things. You have something solid to say to people. Yeah, so there was a lot of challenging things, like how to, how to communicate with people when I don't resonate with what they're saying. And sometimes words are still just spoken and they're very empty and it's not a problem. Yeah, but sometimes you can feel sort of a unfortunateness that they're on this never ending wheel and it's not that you feel better than them. It's not it at all. Because really, all you see is, is what it takes to actually get to stillness. Actually, not get to it, but feel it for yourself. Feel what's beyond the, the intense chase of pleasure and avoiding pain.
it takes everything. Your heart is completely broken open to the point where in a way it can't be hurt anymore. It can't be touched anymore. There's nothing that it's shielding from anymore. And that is the freedom. I was kind of, I was thinking yesterday, like, God damn it. Why did I have to hear this stuff? Why did my, why did these teachers have to push this so much as if it's, as if it's the highest path and I wish I hadn't heard that stuff, but the seeking is so incessant that I would have found it one way or another because deep down there was still a constant dissatisfaction with everything. And the discomfort of that was just, it felt unbearable, not in an extreme way, but it just felt off. So then now that there is just stillness, and you can say this thing still arise here, but it's very empty, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be perfected. It's not a problem. It's not owned. Anger still arises, agitation, but there's no meaning behind it. Like, of course, it's, it can be uncomfortable to, uh, to live sometimes, and that's fine. You can see the, the natural movements of the body underneath the seeking. And uh, it's very much, it's, it's very similar to a cat and dog. We still have our preferences, you know, it's not really thought of, but there's a gravitating toward what's more comfortable, but there isn't this massive chase for pleasure and this desperation to get away from pain. Um, but then saying that kind of stuff is also not true because it just depends on your circumstance. You might have a lot of pain in the body still, and this does not get rid of that. Um, it's still not preferred. So, you know, it is, it is nice to allow the body to be as it is. There's just an allowance now. There isn't a need for it to be perfect, to be spiritual. Like that is probably the most suffering. <laughs> um, it's kind of crazy that, you know, we're so wounded and then we go to these spiritual people, but partially what they're talking about is a perfection of the body in some way and it's excruciating it's more of the same really it's not that different from religion or society that tells you that this is the right way to be
you know, even saying that awakening is important, that's just a dream. That's someone's opinion. I think more it's, um, it can just feel more genuine when it comes from like an internal, perhaps a sort of curiosity, like, is this actually a possibility for the internal friction to soften? So I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not sure if I always emphasize the, the difficulties of this. Maybe I don't speak too much about the, the kind of nice stuff. I'm not sure. Um, but I think when at least this body was go was, was purging the immense trauma here, um, it was just trying to deal with it moment by moment that's that's really all I had um trying to comfort and support the body the best I could and give it the space that it needed because I I couldn't really suppress it anymore I couldn't think it away I couldn't fake positivity I couldn't in a way I couldn't do that much with it it was just here if it was here and maybe i could learn some ways of communication that would allow others to support me and not to change me and not that i expected this but when it did kind of soften um I could see how amazing the human body is. Like with without this intensity, um, the body actually comes back to health. And then it doesn't need authority figures out there to really tell it what it needs. Um, there could be a dismantling of that, which can take time. Um, but largely it's seen that you kind of already have all the tools. Like it's not that you need to push away medicine completely or you need to do the natural thing all the time. Uh, it's a lot more open. It's a lot less rigid. It's not about being a specific way anymore you know, being like spiritually pure or something like that. that. That's all nonsense. But the body does gravitate toward more so-called healthier things just because, yeah, it doesn't grasp, it doesn't need the other stuff. It doesn't get satisfaction. It actually, you just feel the effects of it and it's not very nice. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't enjoy french fries and fried chicken sometimes. It happens, and it's not a big deal. And I this is going to vary for everyone, but I do start questioning all the information that's out there because it's talking about a normal person. And this here is very different from that. 
I, I cannot take that advice anymore. It just, it doesn't make sense. And it's kind of ironic how, you know, there was a definitely an obsessiveness with the health of the body here, understandably, because I had a lot of health issues. Um, and there was a lot of fear around doctors because I wasn't treated well. It was actually a traumatic experience sometimes going to the doctor. And it's not that I blame them. I can understand that they're extremely overworked and trying to maybe work the system or, or do their best in a broken system. Um, they're all traumatized as well. But I could feel that the obsessiveness around the body um, it created a level of stress that I don't know how helpful it was. Um, I'm sure that eating healthy all the time had its good effects, but the stress and anxiety around that um, probably had a lot of negative effects as well. And now that that has really softened, actually the, the care about whether the body gets ill or not it isn't really a big deal anymore. The fear of that was felt through. And now it's okay. It's okay if the body gets sick. It's not preferred. But again, there isn't this stress and anxiety about it. And uh, I could be guessing, but somehow it feels like that allows the body to do what it needs to do. So yeah, you're welcome to raise your hand if you would like to interact. Um, Hey, Anthony. Hi, good afternoon, Susanna, everybody. Hope everyone's well. Yeah, nice uh, to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Uh, I won't be able to make it in March in person. I have uh, a seminar. These these OGs of Jeet Kune Do, it's martial art. They're coming down to a seminar, and they have been here since like 2000. So hopefully I can make it online with, with you know, their discussions are. Mm -hmm. I will actually make it. But um, touch on a few points there. I think uh, about that. He described the body and its uh, as needing to let go of that uh, that feedback loop of thought to try to think it away or think and process in some way that it's going to resolve itself. And itself is the the problem. If uh, 
if I could tiptoe with it, if I could be even more perfect and just tiptoe with it, I would. But I, I have to engage for the body to give itself its space, uh, like you described there, for it to give itself expression, and for it to become in its own, come to its own. And that's where, ironically, you mentioned irony. The irony of uh, the spiritual quest for perfection, and, and really what's described here, goes ahead and entails for a, a daily life that is pretty, uh, could be pretty orderly and intelligent. In this martial art, Jeet Kune Do, which describes exactly what you described, about 99% of Jeet Kune Do practitioners, when they would come here, they'd get blindsided, they'd get hit. And, and, uh, and so I'm glad that you're here talking about this and I found, uh, what you described. Um, and, uh, yeah, besides that, you know, I've been, uh, been able to sit with it, uh, and abstain from drugs and alcohol. That was something that I was able to explore again for a while and, uh, and find that, um, uh, that what happens then is that feedback loop of thought. And it just goes on and on and without careful attention here, which is also a, a comforting and warm one that you, um, describe it, uh, it's possible to, uh, you know, live uh, fundamentally differently. So uh, thanks again and, uh, have a, have a good day. Well, thanks for sharing, Anthony. That's beautiful. Yeah. Hey, Jazz. Hi, Suzanne. How are you? Good. How You're are so you? cute. Aww. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How have you been? Pretty good. Not not so bad. Being back home, it's been actually good. I think more has fallen away. I mean, that keeps Gosh. happening, so... <laughs> That never ends, right? Yeah. <laughs> more and more. <laughs> How empty can you possibly be? <laughs> yeah. So um the last time I talked to you, you're like my therapy. Um <laughs> uh the conditioning came up uh really, really bad. Um and it was about like my trauma and post-traumatic stress and triggers and and then I uh, oh go ahead yeah I I actually I didn't intend to but I looked at the past videos of when you first expressed that kind of stuff and I feel like you have made progress I, I feel <laughs> like I feel like it feels worse just because you're more able to see it fully for what it is like like even more of it and your body is probably like when you said it was kind of uh detaching in some ways like in a yeah, way that, that would make sense because it's like so intense like I watched one of your videos too about conditioning and I was like oh my god I'm saying the same things as her so yeah I mean it came up so bad the loop got so big it was like a wave like I was gonna die and then and then I was like oh it's okay the body can react that way if the body wants to shake <laughs> it could shake if the body's triggered to something you know that's that's it too and then it just oh, like oh, I took a breath and, <laughs> and it felt like the, the loop just like lost its fuel like shh, you know like it dissipated mm. and then it started to be like what if it's just this and the mind is it feels far away from me um like like I can't pay, like I don't I mean if I'm centered I guess I can't pay attention to it anymore it I don't take it for real like it's conditioning, you know, like, and I know why it happened. Like, it's weird. And then, like, I'll go get, like, a cup of coffee or something. And then I feel like I black out and I say, who? You know, like, 
So there's just like weird, I feel better. I feel so much better, but it was very intense. But my question for you is because I'm, I feel, so when I was on the spiritual path, I got to this point of I am, and I, I feel like I'm back there again. So I, I came to this point of being, and then, then I fell into the void and I, the whole story came up to be felt. And now I feel like I'm back there again, where it's like, all I can think about is just being, and the thoughts are not as like important. Um, I mean, sometimes I get caught up in them because I'm really busy, yeah. you know, or, or there's so much going on that I'm just like, blah, 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 you know, but on a regular, I'm, there's this, this stillness now. But then the, the mind's like, oh, that's it. That's it. That's not enough. You know, like, and I, I'm recognizing that that's, you know, bullshit too. Mm -hmm. But I'm like craving this, like, I I keep trying to watch videos about an energetic shift or um, being or um, I, I feel like I'm back to square one. Mm -hmm. I, I and yeah I, I get what you're talking about because I, I felt the exact same way oh my god thank god <laughs> when oh god, no, no. when the trauma comes up really strong it's it's so I kind of feel like there was enough of a loosening and then a um you know, it's going to be different for everyone, but there was a, a gentle kind of seeing of like, oh, this is all it, regardless, it's just all it. Uh, and somehow that opened up the body to reveal what the person was living on top of. Because, because as long as there's, there's this self that's still seeking, it's, it's avoiding what's really there. Like the reasons why you got on the spiritual path and wanted an, an out or an escape, that stuff was never really mended. It was more, oh, let me focus on awakening. Let me, yeah. let me get these spiritual concepts. And, and I'm not saying that maybe some of that stuff was processed. It probably was if you did some emotional work or stuff oh, like I that. Did. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. But, yeah. But it still doesn't, it doesn't allow the whole thing to kind of come up. So then when there's enough of a, of an opening, which it sounds like there was for you, like it, it can really come up and now there's no control when it comes up. Um, but every time it does come up, it is, um, it's, it's losing its strength, even though it feels uh, more intense than ever, because the way that the body is perceiving right now is really full on. It's no longer able to contain things, even in subtle ways. It's, it's really like the body's just freaking out. And you're right, it's conditioning. It's, that's the way that this body has been conditioned to react to that kind of fear. Um, yeah, and it's okay. And it's okay. Yeah, it like it's needs I, to do that. It uh, what? It needs to do it. Yeah, yeah, and it's like I think for the first time, you know, because I was always trying to like not have, have that experience. It's like there's like an allowance of yeah, it can be traumatized. You know, like yeah, it could shake, it could run, it could scream, it could, you know, it could. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I know there's like a little bit resistance because it's not like everything goes away, like whatever, overnight or whatever, but it, I just can't dwell on it anymore. Like I felt through it or something. And I don't know if I'm just like in a little honeymoon phase or something like that. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I feel so like, I have no fucking idea like what is next or like if, if conditioning is going to hit me in the face like tomorrow or or I'm just going to 
I don't know. All I know is that there's this being, I feel like being, there's a lot of being talk, you know, <laughs> like a lot of, I understand my friend was telling me about mantras and I get it now. Like, but I also feel like I'm halfway spiritual if I say a mantra and it, it just, I don't need to listen to that voice in my head anymore. It, it's, it's separated enough after the conditioning came up fully that I don't, I know it's a lie. Like I know what it is and it's not me. It's not the true being, but then I'm like, Oh wait, what am I even supposed to be? So I'm all, I'm so confused. Like, yeah, it's very, cause I, I'm, I'm talking about a being, but there's just this. So what, I my know. being is everything. So I feel like I'm in this, like, um, yeah, man, yeah, whatever you want to say. I'm sure you can help me with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think that there can be a period where there's also a falling away of certain things that you did on the spiritual path. And then there could be a doing it from a really different place. But I know it's still confusing. I know it's still like, is this the same? Like, did I even make any progress? Because so I used to be I used to love touching trees and just being barefoot on the ground. But there was a there was kind of a lot more concepts around it as I was doing it. But mm -hmm. now this time when the body, you know, it's exhausting for the body when trauma comes up, it, it wants, like it can sense, okay, maybe some grounding would be nice. Then I, I did it from a very different place. It was just like, this feels really nice for the body. Like the body seems to really respond to this. Um, just as a description, I could, I could feel the energy of everything and my body and there's no separation and just feel so nice. I, I kept doing it, but it wasn't, it didn't mean anything. It wasn't important as if I need to share this with people or like, this is the thing, or it's just like the body wanted to feel grounded. Um, I, I also. Like before, mm -hmm. I, let's say I was saying an affirmation or something. I was saying it to escape feeling whatever I was feeling but now let's say I say it just because it feels good mm -hmm. there's there's that's the the difference between before and after nice you're not trying to really get somewhere yeah I just maybe don't want to hear the garbage of my mind because yeah. I saw through the the falsity the or not even the falsity. I don't even know if that's the right word, but the it's yeah. just conditioning. It's it, and it it's just conditioning, and uh, there's it feels like it doesn't feel like me. It doesn't. The conditioning used to be me, yeah, and now it doesn't feel like me. Like I I feel like this is me, but I, I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. And that's something else. And I want to, I want to stay there. And then I feel like I'm in a practice again, where I'm trying to stay still or I'm trying to, you know, but I'm not doing it to escape. I'm doing it because it feels better. And I recognize that it's a lie, you know, or, or it's not important anymore to yeah. fall below the mind yeah nice so I um I think when intense stuff was coming up for me too the story still felt real it still uh almost felt like me which was really disorienting and like kind of a bummer at times uh but I, I think what also needed to happen was the collapse of it needed to look a specific way. And I, I needed to, shouldn't I not believe the mind all the time? Like that's yeah. also, um, it's not important anymore. 
sometimes when uh, trauma comes up, like the mind is really believable, but you can, like you said, you can kind of sense that there is something beyond that. It's, it's talking nonsense. It really is kind of like torture and you, you prefer it not to be that way, but also you know that you have no control in it. Um, so yeah, yeah. What everything you're saying is, is great. Yeah. Everything. It's like, it holds you hostage. It, it threatens you all day long. Well, I don't know. Like my, I guess my conditioning is, <laughs> I don't know how about everybody's conditioning. Oh, no, but... mine too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mean. It's really mean. Yeah. Yeah, there's like always something, you know, like there's a, the opposite, you know. And then a couple of days ago, I was really, really happy. And then the next day, I was really, really angry. And I was like, oh my God, you know, it, it so goes from here to there. And I just want to stay here. I want to stay this, this. Yeah. Um, but I, I just don't feel like I've had an energetic gift um I think and I, and I oh really I don't know I think maybe my brain is telling me that there's more to this or this is not enough or or maybe it's talking shit and I'm believing it and and I say okay don't believe it but then like you said there's moments like oh should believe it and then it's like, oh, you know it's like this. I know so so generally speaking this is very simple you don't like forget about the glimpses or like experiences that people have had, just generally speaking, it really is like just describing the human body. We're addicted to the pleasure and pain of things. And then we're addicted to the pleasure and pain of, it it becomes more and more refined. It, it could be like spiritual concepts and spiritual perfectionism. We get addicted to that kind of stuff. Um, they're not separable. It, it can come in and out. They like where where your trauma is coming up. There can still be the the energetic tendency to do the extreme versions of, you know, getting pain, getting pleasure, and avoiding pain. There could be the subtle internal ways of doing that. That could all be at play. But there is a, don't, this isn't not, this isn't an important word, but there is a shift that took place, meaning there is a deliciousness or a wanting for the stillness because there's enough of a transition that took place where you're like, that's it. None of the other I, stuff is really it, but it's still playing out because I have no control in it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Everything you're saying. And I'm, I'm kind of happy mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and I'm scared to be happy because I, I'm, I feel at ease, you know, I feel, I, I, I can, I can just be, you know, I could just be. And I just went through like, like a psychotic conditioning episode. And I'm just like, Oh my God, like I can rest. I can, I can just be, you know, there's rest, there's more of a rest, but I'm scared that it's, you know, the conditions going to come slap me in the face and I'm going to get lost in it because I don't have control. You know, I don't know. And I think I'm just like coming out of a war win and I don't know like what's really happening or, and then, Okay, so another question is like when I had a glimpse and I wasn't here and it was just energy, it was just this. I don't feel like that right now. And I don't know if the glimpses, am I supposed to feel like the glimpse? Like, will I get to a place where I feel like this is just one and I'm part of it and there's nobody here? Because I still feel here. I just don't feel connected to the mind as much. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and I really appreciate you just openly saying all this stuff because it's very rare. Um, so really, 
Yeah, yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank um, you. So, oh fuck, now I forgot your question. <laughs> I was just okay. really appreciating that you were just saying it so honestly. Um, okay, so when I had the last glimpse, oh yeah, the glimpse. I, I okay. had a glimpse. Nobody was there. It was just we were. Everything was just one. I was part of it. The car was driving by itself. Yeah, it was just energy. But I still feel like somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm disconnected from the mind. But I don't feel that like oh, I'm I am one with the wall. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so glimpses are really extreme, uh, experiences that show you a glimpse of what this can be like but the body takes a lot of time to empty out and become accustomed to that so I can sense that any glimpse is pretty similar to how I experience right now but it took so much apparent time for it to actually um uh, adjust to that adjust yeah there's a lot of adjustment that takes place um yeah don't don't feel too alarmed because I felt exactly the way that you do I was very confused I was very like what's happening like I I I, I kind of feel like I just am the same as I was before like did nothing happen yeah. um so that feeling is very normal because your body's not able to, it's just this. So if there is the attacks of the mind and a lot of discomfort in the body, uh, that's all there is. But yeah, only, only with more apparent time that goes by, then you could see in hindsight, like something is kind of diminishing or changing yeah 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 I don't yeah I don't know if like the body can handle that uh, well I don't know maybe people have like an awakening in one day and boom but that, that's a lot you know I like, highly to... doubt that that yeah. that's possible <laughs> yeah yeah like I'm thinking like compared to the glimpse like wow that's like scary to just go to that unknown like that's creepy like I mm -hmm. I rather just all these concepts and labels or whatever just fall off slowly because I can adjust you know mm -hmm. and it happens like just like once in a while boom like who and boom like just like just and it's kind of I'm happy it's slow but I I just my my mind says like oh you're you know you have to be there like, like to the glimpse and it's like I'm I'm just happy that I'm not as I don't believe the mind the way that even though this has happened two years ago but the story I guess had to replay to the fullest extreme yeah but it, I'm happy I, I just I'm scared even to be well isn't the person only happy and sad so mm, I've had similar questions too <laughs> <laughs> The the human body uh still uh can sort of register like oh this is this is nice and um that's not a problem either. I still do that. I still do that. I still am like. Do you have happy days? Yeah, I have bad days. But they're just not like to the extreme. What do you mean like happy days? <laughs> okay, so I I've pretty pretty much suffering my whole life, you know. So like if I'm happy, I'm always like, oh shit, you know, what what's next, you know, like kind of thing. Um, so I'm weary. Um, that's part of the condition. Oh shit, it's part oh. of the conditioning. There we go. We've just answered it. That's okay, so <laughs> yeah, that's really beautiful, Jazz. Oh, okay. It so if it makes sense if you've been really traumatized and then you get a happy day, there is there can be a reaction of like, oh shit, is this gonna go? Or that yeah, that's all energetic too. There we go. We just popped yeah. that one. I guess um I don't know. I just feel more relaxed than like I took a shower. 
And I just sat in my bed after, you know, naked. And I, I just didn't have to get dressed, you know? And I know it sounds really stupid, but like, there's nothing I have to do. It was just so relaxing. <laughs> like, just, like usually I get a shower and I have to get dressed and I just sat there and I was like, I don't, it's just so relaxing, you know? Um, but I can't say that yesterday I had like all this anger that came up and I didn't even know why I didn't have like a pinpoint. And then I started to see the reflection of the outside people too were angry at me. So I didn't, and I'm like, is this spiritual shit? Like, this sounds like I'm manifesting and it's just all weird. Like, um, mm -hmm. I just feel like I'm seeing, seeing myself outside. If I'm angry, there's anger outside. If I'm happy, there's happiness outside. And then I feel like I'm going through this spiritual thing and I, I don't like it. I don't, cause I let that stuff go. I get um, what you're saying. But, um, you know, there was, I think as you're going through this too, you kind of, you kind of see what everyone else was saying, whether it was just conceptual for them or not, like all of these spiritual concepts, you're like, Oh, it, it, um, it can appear like there's, there's something mysterious going on. <laughs> It, it all settles down like you don't need to make a lot of importance in it but there were definitely times where like me and my friend would talk and we would talk about really cool strange things that would happen it wasn't that it was important or um and a lot of it has softened because i, I don't know why because there's nothing really going on anymore um but yeah, there were, there were, there were certain things that I would notice that was like, oh, wow, that is, that is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, um, I don't know, some part of the solution is coming into like highlighting like certain things. It's just such a confusing period right now, but thankful that, um, I that the conditioning went up came up as as big as it did because it's like the monster came out and you just know it's not a monster anymore you know and even though the monster is there and I, I kind of accept that it'll always be there um nice or, or and but it's just it just feels far away it just feels um I don't have to, I don't have to listen to that station. I could, you know, just chill and watch another show, which maybe there's nothing. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's it's just, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm so grateful for, for just speaking to you because, all, you know, these things are so, it's like you're, you keep going through these uh, different phases and um, it's just nice to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I don't want to take any more time. I know that I always take so much time. Oh, I like it. I'm sure it's helpful <laughs> for, for others. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much, Jazz. Thank you. Hi, Sue. I guess I put my hand up because you spoke to something that feels still. Oh, it says my internet connection's unstable. Sorry if you're. Um, it's, yeah, the video is a little choppy, but I think it's okay. I can let you know if it. Okay. I can turn video off too, if that helps. Okay. Um, Pretty you spoke to something that 
I am gonna turn it off. Let's see what happens. Sticky okay. for me. Um, and I don't even know what I want to say about it because I know that anything I say will be just mind. No, it's it's good to talk about it. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so where I'm really getting stuck is the idea of the body and I I really want this body to not be as sick as it was once. And um, if I dissolve all of this belief in a personality and free will fully, then I'll stop trying to be well. And I guess the, the sort of longer backstory here is that um, I did get a post-viral chronic fatigue uh, thing started in 09 and I was bed bound by 2015. And my way out of it actually was this inner work. And it started out as just sort of listening to my, um, what I wanted and my trying to unearth my sense of joy. And that was effective. And I got out of bed and I recovered enough to be able to live, um, live a fairly normal life. And it put me on this path again of, of self-inquiry and it has led to wherever this is now. Um, and when COVID hit and the stories of long COVID came out, I recognized how ill these people, some of them were, and I, I didn't wanna go back there. And I worried that I would, and there were stories of COVID, you know, reactivating, but all stories, I know. Um, but they're very compelling, and uh, it helped me to get still and isolate and do less, you know. Um, it helped me on this path of, of self-inquiry and slowing down and shedding layers. Um, but now we're down to the layer of, you know, I am this body, and... I want this body to not get sick like that again. And what mm -hmm. if, what if I stop? I'm gonna see if my internet's better here. Feels weird talking without video. Um, if I stop believing that, then you know, how can I trust that things won't get that bad again? I won't get sick. And I, anyway. So, so I'm just, I'm struggling that piece and maybe it just unravels on its okay there's chaos happening in the household i hope that's not coming through here sorry i don't hear um yeah i could get up and go close the door but i think they're going to settle down shortly um hang on i'm gonna go close the door okay sure take your time sorry. on these calls for two months now and they decide to I finally decide to talk and they have some drama happening um anyway yeah I think it's good that you um express that kind of stuff um I think it's really healthy to express that kind of stuff I think that's normal it makes it makes sense that you would feel fear around that stuff So I would almost say, like, allow the fear to be here. It was. It came up as soon as I started thinking about talking. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, 
very strong energetic experience. And I am just noticing it, yeah. <sighs> yeah. My sense is that you would, the body would most likely still be cautious because that the experience that you went through, uh, it still had its effects on its body, on the body. And so it would still be cautious. Right, right. It would be a trauma that is still unwinding. Right? Yeah, yeah. You're right. And I hadn't thought of that, actually, as trauma. But it was. It's it trauma. Was trauma to yeah. be that sick, yeah. Yeah, it's very traumatic to go through something like that. <laughs> I don't know why that's making me laugh, but it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. <sighs> I had I had a huge um health trauma thing long time ago when I was maybe 24. I'm like 35 now. And recently it was brought up again, but now it was seen that the body was traumatized. It it wasn't me that was traumatized. It was like, oh, the body is freaked out about this thing. And I could just see, like, yeah, it makes total sense, of course. And there was, there was a natural full allowance for it to freak out. And the mind was going a little crazy, like uh, fearful of its death and like all the possibilities and even dreaming about it. And then I would, I would tell my sister like every day, like what my mind was saying. And she's like, wow, you're really like, you're really obsessed with this. But I didn't feel like um, I was obsessed. It was more like, oh, the body is this traumatized that it's having this effect on the body. The mind is a little like going a little crazy. Um, it's trying to solve the problem. My my body feels the fear. And I just kind of needed people to tell me like, you'll be okay. It's okay. Um Yeah. It's it's allowed to freak out. Did something. I don't know what. I don't need to know what. Yes. Oh, the internet's kind of unstable. Thank you. That helped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's there's there was probably some a little bit of resistance of like, I shouldn't worry about this if you know. But when there is a full allowance of like, that's not up to me, it makes sense why the body is traumatized. Right. And it's not up to me to wear a mask or to not wear a mask anymore, you know, like that's if none of this is up to me, then none of this is up to me. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was really clenched around the idea of it. I don't even know what, but, but just saying that the body is working through something here is super helpful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah. Hi, Simon. Hey, Susan. Good to see you. Nice to see you. 
Um, I've been a little bit looking into um, a curiosity, and I was attracted to it. So I've been looking into um, the Buddhist fetter model. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, at some point, they talk about uh, reactivity. And uh, it seems like I've seen, you know, seen talk, talk to a couple of people about it, and they say that, oh, it's, uh, when it's looked into, it's um, reactivity actually comes to an end, like done. Like there's no anger, doesn't, or you know, the push pull against life, you know, angry at some, somebody cuts you off in traffic or something doesn't go the way I want, and get angry or upset or sad or something. And uh, uh, what's your experience around reactivity? Or is it something you've even bothered with in any kind of specific way at all? Mm. Um, I'm not so familiar with the fetters. I I don't follow anything like that just because I feel like it's healthy for the body to um, largely react the way it naturally reacts but then you could feel the the suffering that it does bring and then it could be questioned from that place of like do I actually want this suffering here Mm -hmm. and not from a place of I shouldn't feel this bad Um, and then there's a rejection of it it's kind of suppressed again it's not you're not seeing it from a an unowned place right um yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So I can say that naturally uh anger has diminished. Cause I cannot see a culprit anymore. But anger okay. anger can arise, I guess. Uh, culprit, uh, do you mean externally? Yeah, because there's no people anywhere. Like Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I can't definitively pinpoint it on on someone in the same way um so for instance like my my neighbors have been really loud and sometimes it would be like really early in the morning they would wake me up maybe 2 30 at night and yeah there I guess you can say that was anger or like frustration or agitation um and I guess you can say one of one of the things that this body particularly does not like is to be woken up like that. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, I think there was a lot more stories around it, like what should I do? And uh, so I ended up messaging messaging them just for yeah. them to to know what's happening, and they were very sweet. They're like, "We'll be more mindful." Um. And then recently it's, it was happening again, like two 30 mm-hmm. at night. So and, thing. Yeah. But I think they had visitors. So I was kind of like understanding, uh, yeah. but I, there was still anger and agitation, yeah. uh, but it couldn't stick anywhere. It couldn't, it couldn't uh, yeah. fester. It, it was yeah. like, it, it came up and then there was yeah. such little fight in here that I ended up just going back to sleep. Yeah. But but the frustration did arise every time um, like I would hear it, but I would forget about it very quickly. Yeah. It, it wasn't like a lingering problem. It was yeah, more it like I was even reminded of it when it would happen and then it would dissolve. So it can get to that point and maybe it diminishes more. I don't know. And I don't even care. Yeah. Yeah. They all, all, make, all make sense to me. Yeah, I have many examples like that. Yeah, little yeah. things happen, right? That yeah, we prefer they didn't happen like that. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything you want to share in your experience? Um. Well, for some reason, I'm a little bit sort of looking at this reactivity. I think I, I've, uh, I think I've uh, somewhere along the line. I think it wasn't until really my early adulthood that I 
I sort of discovered anger. Uh, I had such a traumatic childhood. It seems like everybody has, but uh, that I, uh, I was just depressed. I think I was just sad and depressed and sort of more of a collapse kind of reaction to life and things and and then somewhere along the line I, uh, I I remember reading this book and I was like oh this person's angry and I was like oh I kind of like yeah and anger felt more um and I started to sort of really embody that in, in different you know just in my life things would piss me off and I I would feel the anger about it and it felt good it felt uh empowering and I, like i had some agency and i could also defend myself i felt like i had a sword in my hand all of a sudden yeah. and i'm i'm kind of a tall big guy and i could scare somebody and <laughs> they'd fuck off you know if i got angry at them and that felt really good yeah um but I can uh, lately I've seen that it's become habitual. It's like I, I get, you know, when I say angry, I'm more like irritable, really. I can get irritable about, yeah, like you, exactly. We, we have the same situation, neighbors who are, you know, <laughs> um, it could be anything though. And uh, I notice I get irritable. I'm like, it just looks like a, it's a little, uh, there's something unconscious going on there. That's all. I can I can feel it. I can feel that it's sometimes sure anger is it feels appropriate and it's it's good. I don't I don't have a problem with it. But I'm getting irritable at you know the dishwasher or something. It's like what well, what's going on here? That doesn't look something about that doesn't look right. And mm. it's, so I've gotten curious about it. I'm like, okay, and that's why I sort of got into this fetter thing. And they, they speak specifically about reactivity. And uh, that's all. I'm just sort of looking at it. But mm. yeah. Yeah. I kind of noticed that there was a lot of, uh, like, very generally sp speaking, anger and sadness. And obviously, it's going to vary for everyone. But like looking back at how the personality was or how I related to sadness and anger, the unwinding of that. Like in general, it just kind of makes sense to me why there would be a reaction of like anger or agitation or sadness. Um. I also feel like you're not getting pleasure in the things that maybe you used to in the same way. And really all you're feeling is the uh, discomforts of existence. I could be wrong, but at least that was what was seen more here. I could feel how burdensome life was, like even doing the small mm -hmm. things. Yeah. Um, Because I wasn't getting the pleasure that I used to get. Yeah. I wasn't getting the motivation for doing certain things. I had a specific motivation for acting a certain way, for being productive, for achieving certain things. But without that, the body's actually feeling uh, what it actually is. Like it's sometimes difficult to just do. Yeah. And that would make sense. So you're, you're, Feeling that oh maybe the uh, this irritability or anger I'm experiencing is yeah more connected to that like oh things are sort of yeah okay yeah the pleasures hmm.
The only thing, I, I think I've had this irritability. Uh, uh, it's funny, my brother has the same thing. I mean, the same childhood. So <laughs> uh, I think I've had it quite a while. I think it, like I can look back. And like I said, I think I, I sort of picked up this or discovered anger. But we, I wasn't allowed to have anger in our childhood, uh, in my childhood. My dad was a very angry and violent guy. If anybody got angry around him, it would trigger his anger and you'd get a beating. So I learned to turn that down. So I think I sort of rediscovered it in my early, mid twenties or something. But I think I, I relate to what you're saying. And I also feel like, oh, this, this particular sort of, Yeah, I feel like I feel like a two-year-old is throwing a fit. Mm -hmm. He just wants what he wants and now. And if he doesn't get it, he's gonna throw a fit. And yeah. that, that's, it. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> I, I felt like that too. Yeah. You know how they do. It's kind of sweet when you see it. You're like, oh, it's this poor kid's just throwing a temper tantrum and he's stamping his feet and screaming, yeah. and then you know, okay. Yeah. It's just like that. There's nothing more to it. That's what it feels. You know, it can be more uh, intellectualized, I suppose, but really that's what it is. Mm. Yeah. That makes sense to me. I mean, I had something similar. Like, I think, you know, my parents were so stressed that, like, when I would voice what I wanted, it would be so shut down with sometimes aggression and anger that there was a decision, like, okay, you're, you you're not important like shut the fuck up yeah. and then of course anger will build up you're never getting what you want you're never voicing what you want yeah and yeah it kind of makes sense like that has its ramifications on the body yeah you were never able to be a child you were never able to simply voice what you want which isn't a bad thing it's just it's actually healthy for you to yeah want certain things yeah 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 it's a bit like uh, i forget her name the woman you were just speaking with a bit like oh this stuff gets in the body and it's and it's fine that the body freaks out and yeah you know, has its reaction or response or whatever it is fear anger sadness something Oh, yeah. yeah, I don't, I, I guess maybe the fetters are nice to have as a, as a very loose guideline, but never use it to make yourself feel bad as if this should be gone by now. Or like, that's a marker that I, I think that's a really unhealthy way of going through this because the body needs to. It's mending all of the twisted ways of being yeah. that was accumulated. And that doesn't, you know, it takes time. It takes time to yeah. unravel. Yeah. 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 And I would think even more time or, or something, if there's trauma and, you know, a lot of trauma involved and in it's not just like someone who grew up in a pretty healthy home. They might sort of whisk through things a little easier. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, but what you said, it 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 really sounds familiar to me. I felt like a little child too. Yeah. I think it is often the case that 
a lot of us haven't been able to be just children. We maybe sometimes had to parent our children, our parents or suppress ourselves because the, we couldn't take up the space. Um, that's kind of necessary. Yeah, and the body gets really twisted. It's um, it gets manipulated into yeah, a certain way of being rather than just what's natural in the moment. Yeah. And then our whole lifetime, the way we relate to anger. Yeah, it's just not, it's not healthy. Like even in harmful situations, my anger was suppressed. You know, it was like, oh, I yeah. couldn't voice that this, I felt this was wrong or this is, I'm scared right. or. Right, 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 right it was actually like a suppression of it and yeah. inability to, to voice it. Right. Which can end up putting you in really severe harm's way. Yeah. Right? Cause you can't, then you can't have a good boundary. Yeah. Yeah. And then anger can amplify, but it, it might be toward yourself. Like, why did yeah. you do that? You could right. have said something, which right. is what most people say, but it's like, yeah. They don't understand how, how much of an effect uh, a traumatic experience in childhood has on the body. It it gets so locked down. It yeah. it's really unable to do what you want it to do. Yeah. Did you do any sort of a particular specific therapy or anything, or did you just sort of feel into it and, you know, just let it sort of unwind itself? Mm, I suppressed it for a while. I kind of, I kind of was like, maybe if I don't think about it too much, maybe it didn't happen and maybe it wasn't that bad. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then, um, I think there was a reluctance to to even go to therapy because I I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't admit it to myself, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um I think honestly it was only when I felt really comfortable enough with someone who I knew wouldn't judge me. Like no matter what I say, they would not judge me. Yeah, only then did it naturally kind of come out, even though there was resistance, even though there was like, uh, I don't want to admit to this, but yeah, it's painful. it was yeah. just said. And when it was received, like, it makes total sense why you couldn't speak up. It's yeah. not your fault. It, it makes total sense. Only when it was received like that, then the body was like, oh, yeah like it could it could really come to terms with it and see it could unravel it in its own time and sometimes I needed to feel the excess anger toward the other person that was suppressed yeah. that wasn't also the truth but I you know there was an ability for that to happen yeah. and then yeah and then there there can be a natural gentle seeing of like oh that person's really fucked up but like really innocent as well you know they're just deeply suffering and very they were probably raised in a more toxic environment or something yeah yeah, yeah. that's great Yes, I appreciate that. I love your you have a very gentle way that you have approached all this and I, I really appreciate it. Yeah, in my eyes, there's no there's no reason to be harsh uh, because one, this is the most difficult thing to go through. It's very strange. Um, Of course, you don't want to feel the anger. You don't want to feel the frustration. Um, yeah. 
but sometimes I saw when there's a real allowance of it. Uh, it can kind of unravel on its own, like in its own time. Uh, there's there's no rush. There's nowhere that you're getting to. This is more just seeing like oh, what's what's here. Yeah. It's not it's not really a bad thing. Thanks, Susan. That's great. Yeah. Thanks so much, Simon. Yeah, I was thinking a little bit about what you said before about does the ego arise for you and stuff. Hmm. Um, I would really say don't worry about that in the same way. The ego is is maybe just a term that's used. Uh, I'm guessing when someone's a little more contracted and needs some conceptual understanding of what's going on um because maybe it could be helpful to label things for a certain period of time but now this is all energetic this is really all unknown yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's sort of how i feel pretty much like everything's sort of energetic i just get curious about things also i have a curious mind and so i I might ask a question that's really just a sort of a curiosity mm. more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes sense too. Yeah. I, I enjoy also, you know, I do enjoy mentally understanding things or, you know, sort of, yeah, mentally understanding. It's kind of fun. It's like a puzzle. It's like, oh, that part goes there. Oh, look at that. Oh, that makes sense. You know, that sort of thing. And it doesn't mean anything. I don't like build anything more out of it. It's just like, oh, okay. Like, like cooking. Oh, a bit of salt. Oh, yeah. Wow, that does taste better. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. All right, my dear. Thanks so much. Cool. All right. Thanks, Simon. Hey Jess. Hi, sorry. Um okay. just just one question. Mm -hmm. Um so the body's not real. Yeah. So if the mind is not real, the body's not real. Yeah. Because yeah. the mind is the only thing that says that. It's real. Mm -hmm. And the mind is the only thing that says anything is real. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, there is no mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's, but what is that? Like, what are, what are, what are those, those, I mean, are they just energetic waves just coming through and we make meaning of them and attach them to the body and then they, center this thing into believing that it's something solid what the fuck am i talking about I oh my know. god kind of yeah the basically i think when the there isn't a free flow of of energy or whatever you want to call this in the in the body like eventually it gets really things get stuck and it feels solid. It feels real. Like this feels real. And then you, the so-called mind or the thoughts have a lot more reality. And so therefore it creates reality everywhere about everything. Um, and then, but it, it is possible to, Yeah.
yeah, so-called, I guess, see beyond that where, yeah, you know, mind is, is made up, body is made up. It's all unknown. So the only thing that keeps it solid is these deep traumas and emotions and beliefs and labels. That's what keeps it um, as a solid entity. And as you empty out, it's, I want to say like you, you, you blend with everything, but, um, yeah. Wow. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that simplistically. I do think that there can be a seeing and trauma can still arise, but when the trauma is there, the mind will feel more real. And so then there is still, uh, there can still be a lot of, you know, resistance and discomfort and not wanting it which is normal. So it makes this fuzzier, much less clear. But I, I wouldn't say that trauma is a, it doesn't need to disappear for it to be seen clearly. Like there's more potential for it to be seen clearly uh, if the body has less stuff, but yeah, I don't want you to think that it needs to go away. Yeah, because everything should is okay. It's it's everything, so it doesn't need to, and it can happen the way it wants to. Mm -hmm. But this, this body is just your mind saying it's a body. Pretty much, yeah. So you live in complete unknown of everything. Mm -hmm. And but you still know what things are because um, of memory. Yeah, the body seems to be able to just function <laughs> like without thought. Uh, the thoughts can still arise, but. It's not because of thought that the body can function. That's so crazy. Wow. Okay, that's that's all. Thank you so much. I just had, I had that question for a couple of days. I forgot to ask about. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And the thoughts don't need to go away. It's, um, I think it's, it's, just becomes more clear that there is no ability to distinguish anything, whether it be thoughts or the body or space. Um, I don't know where it's coming from. I don't know how it's happening. It's like they're all the same, that yeah. you're just, you're just, yeah, it's like all the same. Yeah, it's made of the same. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. yeah. It's like the same. It's like the same fabric or something. Yeah. It's all energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> I don't know Thanks, what else. <laughs> I know, I'm like lost. I'm staring at the wall like, what the hell did I just say? <laughs> oh, I thought it was really sweet. Yeah. It can be very profound. I think I feel like I'm getting like an intellectual understanding of it um, mm -hmm. more and more. Mm. Um, and then like, I'll have a little shift here and like, so it's just that the body keeps coming up. It's weird. It's if it wasn't called a body, then what is it? What is it? You know, it's just this. And if you don't call a couch a couch, then it's just this, but energetically i there is boundaries here you know so i know i haven't had like a you know i i, I don't feel it all as one but i'm i'm an intellectually 
starting to break down things that where I understand it's one, you know, and the glimpses, obviously you, you see something like that and it, it stays with you. Um, so you can reflect on that glimpse and, oh, you know, but okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. Nicely said. Thank you. Yeah. I also want people to know that I, I never had massive glimpses. I'm kind of glad that I never did. This was really just like a slow fade for here. So you don't even really need massive glimpses. Um, for some reason, I just want to say that. You're probably better off that way. Because you, then you kind of like chase the the glimpse, you know, you're like, oh, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet because you saw this thing, you know, so you're, it's probably better that it happened that way because just slowly falling away. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't, yeah. Like you said, I wasn't really chasing anything. I didn't even know what this was. It was more like, uh, yeah, a slow fade. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, when you have a glimpse, it's not that you know what this is, but like, I guess you have a sense of it. You can. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I'm never there. I'm never there because that was so profound compared to your reality. You're like, oh, my mm -hmm. God, I just disappeared and I was driving and everything was, was just one. And mm. now I'm back and you're like, ugh. You know, like this, you know, you feel like you're like jumped out of like heaven or something. And, yeah. and then you're like, I want that back. Like, what do I have to do? You know, so mm. um, maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad. I guess whatever. I guess it happens the way it happens. Yeah, it could be both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, something came to mind when you were saying about like some interesting things you were seeing before when we were talking mm -hmm. um i don't feel this way now but it felt like i was in a different world the so now everything has collapsed it's all just flat and it just is what it is but yeah, before I think as it was transitioning, it felt like I was being sucked out of this world that I thought I knew. And I was like in a different world and everyone else was in a in some other world. Um, <laughs> because, you know, how I was perceiving everything was changing. Um, everything felt alien to me, you know, the way that I perceived bodies, like it was becoming alien. What I found attractive was kind of disappearing. And yeah, what I, what I thought was real and normal, like it just all was, yeah, falling away. And yeah, it was just very strange, but I don't think I'm there yet. I think I'm just like touching maybe that space of unknowing things and maybe feeling alien to it. But it's nice to hear you say that because if it does come up here, I won't freak out or anything. Yeah, or or it was more like I was in between worlds. I was kind yeah. of flashing in between, you know? Yeah, I kind of feel like I'm at the edge, like I'm not in another world yet, you know, like I'm at this like cliff or something, not a cliff, but I'm nowhere, you know, I'm mm -hmm. neither here. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it just feels like a desert or I don't know. I really have no clue, but it's nice to know that I might feel um, a little 
alienated <laughs> or <laughs> gosh this process is so damn long and <laughs> it's like what else <laughs> yeah like jesus like every story had to play out every freaking emotion had to be felt every now it's like oh every label needs to be taken it's just like fuck dude like <laughs> sorry i just need to let that out okay i'll let someone else speak <laughs> yeah yeah i appreciate you jazz thanks thank you Hey, Selena. Hi, Suzanne. Can you hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, great. A couple weeks ago, we were I was talking to you about some um, patterns popping back up from childhood. Some regression patterns of like daydreaming and like some escapism things that I would do as a child. And since then, I'm realizing that I think why that's happening or why my body is doing that is because I'm losing a lot of hope and comfort that I got from the non-dual message. So like for the entirety of 2023, you know, this was just everything for me and I work full time. So even while working full time, I was practicing inquiry the entire time, like just all day, every day, just when I realized it had been an hour or two and I hadn't done anything related to awakening or true nature, you know, it was just immediately like a dive back in. And uh, hope's falling away, which is weird because, you know, I've gone through periods of feeling like hope fell away completely. Um, but that seems to be what's happening is that hope's falling away. The idea that this is going to get something or have me get something out of it is falling away. And it's not the messages aren't giving me the same kind of comfort in my body or the same kind of relief or, you know, the same sense of like, oh, this is going to get better. This is going to turn into something else. Um. So all that's really left now is like the body just naturally doing what feels good. So I've been watching reality TV and just reading magazines and honestly like doing extreme versions of vegging out because uh, it seems to at least give me the comfort that the YouTube videos and lectures and books and everything else was giving me before. Yeah. But... Yeah. Those momentary comforts, even though that's what the body wants to go to, they don't give me any fulfillment. They don't give me any, they're not going to fix anything, and I know that. But I'm also not angry it's happening because it's like, well, there's nothing else to do. You know, the body just wants to, I just want to enjoy life. The body just wants to enjoy life. Like, there's nothing wrong with where things are going right now. But, um, what's really interesting is like in the past week or so as I haven't wanted to listen to any of this I haven't been able to read I haven't been like my brain just blocks it out so it kind of feels like even though the body and the mind is running away from this message running away from truth like just can't keep doing this anymore as I'm like vegging out, as I'm running away from it, I'm still having these really strong feelings of like, oh my God, I could pop through it anytime. Of feeling like I've done so much of this and I've done so much of the clearing out that like the brain will just randomly have an inquiry thing pop up and then the body will freeze in fear because it's like I'm gonna pop through like one of these times like I'm gonna be it's gonna happen I'm gonna be gone like I can feel it it's almost like it's just like being right next to the void for a year mm. um so it's just it's really really strange it's it's weird to watch all of this happen because it's like I 
there's something deep inside of me that I think is always going to return to this. That is always going to, this is it. And this is where I'm going. And I know that, but it's interesting to watch that. Like over the last month or so, there's been a whole lot of like, I guess, disillusionment, a lot of disillusionment with the path and That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it can be a bummer. And it, it does kind of make sense that you would go back to uh, just other simple pleasures because the, yeah, the non-dual stuff or awakening stuff, yeah, it just doesn't do it anymore. I, sometimes it feels like it's causing me extreme suffering. That's good to see. Sometimes the hearing of this and the wanting of it can cause more suffering. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, I remember kind of feeling like, okay, I'll just live a normal life then. But then I, I knew I couldn't. But yeah. there was like a, for here, I loved um, watching dating shows. So I just like, I mean, that was always kind of sort of there, but then since the spiritual stuff was falling away, maybe there was more of that stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so that f sounds familiar. And it's funny too, because like when you only focus on this stuff for an entire year, anytime you open your phone, your algor algorithm is just like, oneness and wholeness and nobody's uh -huh. here and this is and so I'll just open my phone and scroll for like two minutes and just be like I cannot do this anymore I cannot keep reading this stuff I cannot keep yeah. listening to this stuff I cannot do it yeah 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 that and makes that, a lot of sense yeah um you know sometimes it reminded me of like there's some shows on Netflix about like Hasidic Jews and some of them wanting to get out, but how difficult it is to actually get out. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of uh, understandably like anger and like, ah, uh, but that's, it, it's, it's different, but it's pretty similar. Like when you get disillusioned with the spiritual path or um, anything, really, there is kind of like a, ugh, and I think that's normal. Uh, that certainly happened here. I guess this is almost me kind of like tattling on myself or maybe just <laughs> being willing to embarrass myself a little bit. But like, I, I'm turning 30 this year and it was really important to me to get this by 30. I really, really wanted to. And I think a big part of that does have to do with ageism in our culture and with me not feeling like I've accomplished anything in my life and that I'm a pretty lazy person and that I thought it would be really cool and fun to be able to say I woke up in my 20s. Mm -hmm. That it sounds better than 30. Mm -hmm. I and like I, I know how ridiculous that is. I no. know like it embarrasses me to feel that way, but that's just the truth is I really wanted to be able to get this. And like, even that's starting to fall away. It's just like, well, you thought eight months ago you were really, really close. So mm. it, it sounds like a, a death of a dream, which is hard. Yeah. Um, I, I just want you to know that I had very similar thoughts of like, I always wanted to do everything young. I, w I wanted to travel the world young. I wanted to become a director young. I wanted to, so you're, that's not weird. It's a dream that some people have and it's not easy for it to fall away because you're kind of also dealing with the death of time, you know, the non-existence of it really.
When you were going through this process, did you ever have worries or, or thoughts about whether or not you were experiencing like derealization or disassociation versus actually being cleared out? Yeah, this is not clear cut. Um, I remember asking my friend many, many times, like, what if this isn't happening? Like, I don't know. I just can't tell. Yeah. And the truth is he didn't know either, but he would give me reassurance because yeah. you know that things have fallen away. You know that things have clarified. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to it's a different kind of certainty. It's not a certainty of like, oh yeah, I know. It's more like things have fallen away. Like every month or two, when I look back, I'm like, things have fallen away. The, the, I think the most trickiest part was when the trauma here was coming up a lot. I really couldn't tell. I was just like, I don't know what's happening. I just want a comfortable life, please. Um, yeah. That's all I really could think about. Um, and then I would have thoughts of like, oh, I wish I, you know, I wish I just had a healthy childhood. I wish I just had a healthy life. But it was always coming back to like, but that's not freedom. I know that I would still not feel like this is quite it. Um, but I, I think I just mentioned that because there was kind of like a constant going back and forth, like what could have been and what should have been, um, which makes sense because there's just immense discomfort here. It's just like, oh, yeah, this is not what I wanted to, to feel this fully was not the idea of awakening I you know it's not what I thought it would be and then that's that's a loss of a dream too it's yeah I had a teacher one time say to me that um you know, you want to be everything, but there's so much that you don't want to feel. Mm. And it was, that really impacted me because I think from that point, it was uh, very clear to me that like, whatever appears, whatever arises is already here. So any kind of resistance that you put on top of that just becomes the new here, so to speak. I'll see I don't know. I feel like there's there's half of me. I guess there's like half of me that wants to be with everything because there's a genuine heart level to that of like I I just want to be with it because it's already here and I don't want to reject anything and that feels very right and very true. And then there's the other half of me that feels like well you're only saying that because you think it's going to make you feel better eventually. You know that you're going to eventually get to a place where you feel okay with it all and. Oh, I think that's fine. I think that's okay. Um, there's always going to be a little bit of hope, a little bit of everything. Um, yeah, so I, I don't think you need to be too harsh on yourself. Uh, of course, the body just wants to feel okay. Uh, there might be a deeper longing to really be open enough to feel whatever. Um, but it also makes sense that the body wants comfort. It doesn't prefer a lot of trauma coming up. Seems like I had to have several months where I had to like 
coach myself into slowly feeling things and allowing trauma to resurface and allowing the body sensations to surface. And now I don't really have a choice. That stuff is just there. And it's there a lot of the time because I've, I'm just a naturally sad person. I, I have a lot of despair that just sits in my body and stuff. And so now it seems like what I've been trying to do is just learn how to be okay with that or just learn how to not judge those sensations as bad and to try to view them as neutral because I don't have much of a choice anymore. They're just full on. But it seems like the thing that is still sticking or the thing that is still sticky is all of those desires of just wanting to relate to it differently or to not feel it or for it to. That makes sense. Those are all little deaths that are happening though. Um, and I want to also say that I thought I was a sad person. Um, I wasn't always like that, but I think after something traumatic happened, like after that point, I, I sort of identified like I'm just a sad person. And through this, there was even a deeper acceptance of like, holy shit. Yeah, I'm just like sad all the time. And it was a bummer. But like now looking back, a lot of this can be very sad. So it's not really personal to you. Maybe there can be some elements um, of like echoes of the past and stuff, but this is a hard thing to go through. It's a very sad thing to go through. And the deeper, the deeper sadness and sorrow that you're able to feel, it's, it's the, that's actually how you get in touch with the beauty. Without it, I don't know. You, you live on the surface level. Um, but usually like when I, this is not to say anything bad about anyone, but when I'm around a, a contracted spiritual person, it's very hard to relate to them because they're very much in the mind. But when I'm with someone who has grieved and been through it they've been tested by life they've been broken down and their heart has just been shattered there is such a beauty there um that's what i see with people who go through this you are broken open and it's it's not an easy thing There are times where I feel like having conditioning that makes you end up on one of these paths is one of the most blessed, beautiful things. And other times where it just feels like, well, I don't, I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to do any of this. I didn't want to. And I think both can probably be true. Yeah. Um, I definitely oscillated between those to I I think I sometimes still do like I see the beauty of it but I also see like yeah I never wanted this this is really not wantable <laughs> you don't get anything you can't claim anything you know thank you yeah thanks so much for sharing it's really beautiful.
Yeah, if you go through this, you are so strong. And usually it's not, you didn't do this by choice, you know? No one would really choose this. Hi, your Tom. Hi. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, so I'll try to be uh, quick. It's um, okay. You could take your time. So uh, I discovered in the past month, uh, maybe a little more, um, Tony Parsons and Jim Newman. And that was uh, that was special for me. Uh, uh, it was yeah, it's it, it's changed how how I related to non-duality and it still does and it's kind of confusing me, uh, but it also feels good to um, watch them uh, and also it kind of uh, it kind of shakes the whole um, understanding of uh, spirituality and it makes me doubt like I've, I've put so much personal investment in non-duality uh, and the teachers and the authority um and yeah, it kind of. Uh, so I I I, I wanted to to ask you what what do you think about this, uh, like. Uh, I'm not really sure where you where I would put you, in in this uh, scale that I have in my head. <laughs> um, but that's unclear to me. Um, <laughs> oh. That's kind of sweet to hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I think what that makes sense that um it's kind of a little disorienting if you've invested in certain teachers and then you hear something like the radical message which is it kind of cuts through everything. Yeah. Um, like it, it feels like all the legitimacy has they has been taken out of it, and there's something inside that's like no. Uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense because there there was probably a feeling of love, love and admiration, and um, kind of feeling safe with an authority figure or a teacher. So that does make sense. And it's not easy and, for that to be. And, and, it, mm -hmm. and a way to see the world, maybe. Mm. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of teachers are more focused on like something different than what's act what this is actually about. Hard to accept. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. And you don't have to accept it. It's um maybe it maybe it's more for you to see where you want to go for now 
uh, what you want to believe in for now, because. I feel like the resonance is just with the, these new uh, speakers that I found. Uh, and so naturally with the resonance that will work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What will happen will happen. That's beautiful what you just said. Yeah. Because the other stuff just starts to not make sense. <laughs> yeah. Or not feel, not ring true, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That's yeah. disappointing. <laughs> yeah, totally. I get it. I think it's also beautiful what you said about you don't know where to place me because I don't know where to place me either. I I feel like I'm, you know, uh, there's no wanting to fit anywhere. It's just uh, an expression of what this is like here a knowing that it's going to be unique everywhere. But I feel like there's a wanting to talk about the nitty gritty stuff that the radical people don't talk about. Yeah, they don't. They also and... don't talk about process. They don't talk, they don't like make you feel comfortable. Even. <laughs> <laughs> it happens here. Like people feel comfortable and share and yeah. Yeah, it, I don't know if it's just like, a, um, that's just what's arising here. I've, I've never been the type to dismiss people's feelings. I will I will still most likely tell you the truth, but I will meet you emotionally first. And that's just how it appears here. But I've always kind of been like that. It's not a new thing. And maybe it'll dissolve, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, there can be there can be a little bit of a uh yeah the the radical message can really cut through everything, you know, all the process, the path, and there's such a beauty to that, and it can be very beautiful for a while, but then even that becomes nothing yeah not too necessary to just stick to that you know mm -hmm. yeah and i would i wanted to ask like if there is for people resonance with like buddhism or uh softer forms of non-duality or like that is good isn't it yeah that's beautiful what you just said because um a part of me feels like if maybe, maybe part of Buddhism, I'm not an expert at all. So don't trust what I say, but I think part of Buddhism is like the real truth is no self, but for the, for those who want to be just so-called householders, the these are practices to live a better life but that has nothing to do with no self it's very different so then yeah, that's, that's confusing i have a friend that is into like buddhism uh, which i used to have a lot of common ground with him and now in conversations it's like i have no idea what to say i have no idea like it's a uh, yeah it's really weird because suddenly i understand that every there's no good and bad even and i don't know it's a lot of things change yeah yeah that makes sense to me yeah it's kind of beautiful hearing you express all of that You feel complete for now? Complete. 
<laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, it's nice to see you. And thanks for sharing. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being here. Love you all. Bye.